Hey everyone, it's Andy here, and just wanted to give an update today as we start the month of February on what's happening in Virginia with unemployment payments under the 2021 extensions. Luckily, there's a lot of good news that the PUA program has now been implemented. Those are that's the 11 week extension, and that it's being paid from the coming week. There will still be some processing delays and additional documentation requirements for new applicants, and I'll, I'll show you a summary of that shortly. But the good thing is the PUA program has been implemented and we'll start seeing it. The PEUC is delayed, and I'll, I'll show you in the summary table I have from the VEC Commission, their summary. And I want to give you some updates, and there's still some delays for certain claiming groups, but the good news is there is progress. And I know a lot of uh, readers and watchers of this site have been uh, seeing their get government to go app updating with all the missing weeks that they're eligible for. They need to obviously go and claim those weeks and they should be getting those payments uh, hopefully from next week. So just to just to summarize what's happening here with the um, updates as of the start of February. So this is focusing on the 11 week extension. So you, you can see here on this page that I've tried to summarize the VEC update, which I'll, I'll get to shortly as well. So you can see some of the specifics here, but just to try and make it simpler, because I know it's not easy to read the whole table on top, you have the different broad claimant category groups because the system updates were done by certain claimant groups. So I've tried to sort of summarize that by the four main claimant areas. And people can obviously switch between this depending on where they are, but this will sort of help you um, figure out where your claim is if it's not been paid yet. And on the left, you have the two big programs, the PUA 11-week extension and then the PEUC 11-week extension. Both of these are effective from the week ending January 2nd under the new funding from the continued uh, con the COVID relief bill. Um, if you get any of these programs, you'll also get the $300 extra payment on top for 11 weeks. So starting from the top here, um, obviously for active claimants, they don't get PUA because they normally can get regular UI, but they can get PEUC after using their existing uh, regular unemployment. For those in extended benefits, they can use up the extended benefits first and then they can go um, and go back and looking at PEUC. They may have to file a new claim for that though. But this has been in place for a while and these people are already getting the $300 payment, this group of claimants. So those who had um, extend, you know, an active claim remaining for the original 39 weeks from the CARES Act, they can also claim the extended weeks. Now, there's a bit of a delay in rolling out the program for those with um, active active weeks, which is the 39 weeks or the um, 11, 13 weeks under the PUC program. But they can now claim the extended 11 weeks now, and they should already start. They should already have started seeing that on their accounts. Um, actually, I think they started last week, and again, they'll be getting a $300 payment. So the biggest new update was the uh, PUA program. So that now can be claimed, and I've seen on comments here on different websites. The extended weeks are now showing up so you can claim it and hopefully from early February the payments will start which will also include the retroactive payments for both PUA and the $300 payment. So you should have a pretty sizable payment. It may take a week or two to catch up because systems are slow to process and your banking thing but they should be coming through next week which I know will help a lot of people. Um, new claimants can also start applying for PUA so those are those extended weeks. You can't go back and backdate it all the way back. You only go backdate it to this. The, the funding is only from the week of January 2nd. Um, for the extension 11 weeks. So you can go back and apply for those extended weeks, including those retroactive weeks. So that, that's good. And those new claimants will have to actually provide new documentation, which would potentially delay things, but at least um, the VEC now is able to process those. The one big area, which will probably affect about 80 to 85,000 people, is the PEUC system is still not updated. Uh, it was supposed to be done on the end, the end of January, but the VEC has pushed that out. So you still can't, if you've exhausted your existing benefits, you still can't claim those extra 11 weeks and new claimants also can't get the 11 weeks, which means that until those are updated, you know, these people will still have to keep waiting if they've already exhausted their benefits or they need to file a new claim. The estimate has not been provided. We hopefully will get an update next week. My estimate is that it'll probably be the end, middle uh, of February. Uh, I would say that's probably by when they should be done. This is just a little more complicated because a few more steps to jump through is a separate programming at the VEC. But I would say by mid-February, they should all be in place, uh, if not earlier. So keep checking, obviously, the VE site, and I'll update as I get more information. So just to provide a couple of um, updates, and I'll, I'll go into the VEC page shortly to show you what that was saying. But the PUA claimants now under the new continued Assistance Act have to basically provide new documentation within 21 days of applying for new applicants 
and then within 90 days for existing applicants who the state may ask for additional documentation. And I've done a video on this and some articles, and I'll you, know, you can see it up there in the link. But this is really to prevent fraud and to make sure that people on the PUA program, which is really for you know gig workers, contractors, and freelancers who don't necessarily have W-2 income, they're going to be requiring to prove more documentation to prove their income so that they can get either 50, the minimum is 50% of the, the maximum um, weekly benefit allowance or they can get the full maximum. So they'll have to provide documentation uh, of their self-employment income for this. And I've covered that in an earlier video. State agencies also have to implement new procedures to verify and validate the identity of claimants, or PUA claimants. So this is part of the new legislation as well for the 11-week extension. So this procedure is happening in parallel to the program rollouts. Um, I think this will take a while because of the complexities, but this is happening. So you may be required at a certain point to go in and do some additional um, identity checks if the VEC flags your claim. This is not going to happen for everyone. It's going to be done through sampling, but they have to prove that they're checking identities to ensure that the on you know the huge issue with PUA fraudulent claims doesn't keep happening with the eleven week extension. And again, this is not the VEC. This is being mandated at a national level, so it's not just being targeted in Virginia. Um, I do also want to acknowledge. I know there's a lot of people who may actually have fit in one of those categories of claimants that they could have actually be getting benefits today, this extension. But there is 20,000 people that the VEC has acknowledged around that number and the whittling and down that number that are still subject to ongoing manual processing because the original claim under the CARES Act, 39 weeks, especially the PUA claims, um, had to have additional documentation or was flagged for fraud. So these claimants basically had their claims stopped getting paid, and so they were stuck while they waited for... Um, the VEC to process the claim, and it's always been hard to get information. It doesn't leave, it doesn't provide much information on the VE side unless it's saying that it's um, halted or it's paused. So there's about 20,000 people affected. So you may find that you're one of these people, and so you're probably frustrated why you haven't seen any movement on your claim um, for the last several months, and especially being able to certify for the 11 week extensions because you're probably caught up in this group of people that have to go through the manual processing, which is unfortunate, but I think you just have to keep hoping that once these system updates are done, that the VC can start processing this backlog of claims much faster than they have been. So I just want to quickly show you the VEC site that uh, confirms some of these updates. And like I said, you know, always check um, or your portal, the VEC site for the latest updates, because this general update will talk about what's happening. But there's always case specific claims that are unique to your case or your uh, claim that you need to make sure that you check your portal to see if they've requested additional documentation or additional verification or your claim was flagged for fraud. So just keep monitoring that. But just to show you what's on the VEC side, they update this about every week and I based the table I just showed you on this information. So hopefully it's easier to look at the table to try to look at this, but you should always check this for the actual dates if you want to see. So um, like I said here, the top section, uh, the if you did not exhaust your benefits, that means you still had weeks left or remaining balance after the CARES Act. You would have already, from mid-January, been able to get the uh, extension. You should have seen it on your portal, and you can keep filing. And this was sort of ready, including the $300 extra payment you would have been getting um, back to the weekend in January 2nd. So all these changes were implemented mid-January. I posted a video earlier for the Virginia updates, which reflected this. The new updates were here, and this is the part that sort of happened over the last few days. Um, the PUA program, as I showed you, that has been extended. It was implemented on schedule, on time. And so now for most claimants, again, if you're not caught up in some fraudulent checks or um, other reasons, you should now be able to see those extra weeks on your uh, portal. New claimants can start applying with that new documentation requirement. Um, new applicants within 21 days to provide documentation or within 90 days for existing claimants. And the VEC will have to notify you when they want new documentation. So please stay aware of that and uh, don't ignore any emails or texts that you see. But it's PUC that really have had the delays. They were supposed to also be done on January 29th, but they have been pushed out. The date's not certain. My guess would be sort of mid-February when I think these will be done, hopefully earlier. But I would say plan for mid-February for these changes to be done. The PUC, again, has a few more hurdles to go through in the new legislation because it needs to make sure that you use up your regular UI. If you change benefit years, you, your eligibility for PEUC changes, most likely you may have to file a new claim if you're in a new benefit year. So a little bit complex and it's a little bit taking some time to roll these changes out. But once this is updated, hopefully by mid-February, you should be able to, again, see those extra weeks, be able to claim those extra weeks. And then, you know, and, and you can go till uh, March 13th for new claims, but you can actually, there's actually a phase out period till April 10th for those who have existing weeks left. So you will get those 11 weeks and you will get paid out, um, you know, for the amount that you should be due. The one thing, like I talked about here, the documentation requirements, 
These have not been implemented, as you can see here. So they're still implementing it. So that's why I'm saying be very careful. Keep checking your online claims when you certify weekly that they're not asking for additional documentation. Because if you don't provide that documentation, and I've done a whole video on what kind of documentation uh, causing issues with PU claims, it's, I did it last week, um, you can actually see a delay in your claim. So please keep checking that. Submit any documentation that's required to prove your income or your identity and uh, so that you don't have any delays in your claim. And the mixed un unemployment compensation, that's the $100 on top of PUA for self-employed workers who had more than $5,000 of self-employment income plus wage income. This program is going to affect a very small group of people. I've, I've got an article on this specifically, but this is still being implemented. I think this is brand new. It'll probably take till March 2021 before this even comes out. So I'll post more of that when it comes out, but that's not there yet. Anyway, um, as I said before, I think the next official update will come February 3rd. I'm, I'm continuing to update uh, the, VE, the VEC tracking page that I have on my site, and I'll post a link below that for this, and I'll do a new video if there's a significant new update here. Hope, so hopefully this helped you, and um, these this table here is a good summary for people who just maybe don't find it hard to read those whole pages. Leave a comment, leave a question, and if you find this information useful, please uh, consider liking or subscribing via the buttons below. Thanks. Bye.